خرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملت ويديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عادك الأرجون القديم لا الشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرق القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن شع نغرقهم فلا سريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاع إلهين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تعتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا عن طعيم من لو يشاء الله أتعما إن أنتم إلا في دلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينذرون إلا سيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخسمون فلا يستطيعون توسية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في السور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا سيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على لرائك متكيون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب رحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أهد إليكم يا بني آدم ألا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وعن عبدوني هذا سراط مستقيم ولقد أدل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إسلوح اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لتمسنا على عينهم فاستبقوا السرات فأنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مديا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويهق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينسرون لا يستطيعون نسرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنق قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون 
أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الْإِنْسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَسِيمٌ مُبِينٌ وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ قَالَ مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمٌ قُلْ يُحْيِي حَلَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٍ وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ خَلْقٍ عَلِيمٌ نِلَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّجَرِ أَخْضَرَ نَارًا فَإِذَا أَنْتُمْ مِنْهُ تُوقِدُونَ أَوَلَيْسَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِقَادِرٍ عَلَى أَنْ يَخْلُقَ مِثْلَهُمْ بَلَى وَهُوَ الْخَلَّاقُ الْعَلِيمُ إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا رَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ فَسُبْحَانَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ مَلَكُوتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ
Do I felt like? اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عن جابر بن عبد الله الأنصاري عن فات عن فاطمة الزهراء عليها السلام بنت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى قال سمعت فاطمة أنها قال دخل علي برسول الله في بعد الأيام قال سمعت فاطمة أنها قال دخل علي برسول الله في بعد الأيام فقال السلام عليك يا فاطمة فقلت عليك السلام قال إني أجد في بدني ضعفا فقلت له أعيذك بالله يا أبتاه من الضعف فقال يا فاطمة إيتيني بالكساء اليمان فغتيني به فأتيته بالكساء اليمان فغتيته به وسرت أنذر إليه وإذا وجهه يتلاله كأنه البدر في ليلة تمامه وكماله فما كانت إلا ساعة وإذا بولدي الحسن قد أقبل وقال السلام عليك يا أمة فقلت وعليك السلام يا قرة عيني وثمرة فوادي فقال يا أمة إني أشم عندك رائحة طيبة كأنها رائحة جدي رسول الله فقلت نعم إن جدك تحت الكساء فأقبل الحسن نحو الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا جدا يا رسول الله أتعذن لي أن أدخل معك تحت الكساء فقال وعليك السلام يا ولدي ويا صاحب حوضي قد أذنت لك فدخل معه تحت الكساء فما كانت إلا ساعة وإذا بولدي الحسين قد أقبل وقال السلام عليك يا أمة فقلت وعليك السلام يا ولدي ويا قرة عيني وثمرة فوادي فقال لي يا أمة إني أشم عندك رائحة طيبة كأنها رائحة جدي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله فقلت نعم إن جدك وخاك تحت الكساء فدنا الحسين نحو الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا جداه السلام عليك يا من اختار الله أتعذن لي أن أكون معكما تحت الكساء فقال وعليك السلام يا ولدي ويا شاف أمتي قد أذنت لك فدخل معهما تحت الكساء فأقبل عند ذلك أبو الحسن علي بن أبي طالب وقال السلام عليك يا بنت رسول الله فقلت وعليك السلام يا أبا الحسن ويا أمير المؤمنين فقال يا فاطمة إني أشم عندك رائحة طيبة كأنها رائحة أخي وابن عمي رسول الله فقلت نعم ها هو مع ولديك تحت الكساء فأقبل علي نحو الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله أتعذن لي أن أكون معكم تحت الكساء 
قال له وعليك السلام يا أخي ويا وسي وخليفتي وصاحب لوائي قد أذنت لك فدخل علي تحت الكساء ثم أتيت نحو الكساء وقلت السلام عليك يا أبتاه يا رسول الله أتعذن لي أن أكون معكم تحت الكساء قال وعليك السلام يا بنتي ويا بضعتي قد أذنت لك فدخلت تحت الكساء فلما اكتملنا جميعا تحت الكساء أخذ أبي رسول الله بتلف الكساء وأومع بيدي يمنى إلى السماء وقال اللهم إن هؤلاء أحل بيتي وخاصتي وهامتي لحمهم لحمي ودمهم دمي يعلمني ما يعلمهم ويحزنني ما يحزنهم أنا حرب لمن هاربهم وسلم لمن سالمهم وعدم لمن عاداهم ومهب لمن أحبهم إنهم مني وأنا منهم فاجعل, فاجعل سلواتك وبركاتك ورحمتك وغفرانك ورضوانك علي وعليهم وأذهب عنهم الرجس وطاحرهم تطهيرا فقال الله عز وجل يا ملائكتي ويا سكان سماواتي إني ما خلقت سماء مبنية ولا أرضا مدهية ولا قمرا منيرا ولا شمسا مضيعة ولا فلك يدور ولا بحر يجري ولا فلك يسري إلا في محبة هؤلاء الخمسة الذين هم تحت الكساء فقال لمين جبرائيل يا ربي ومن تحت الكساء فقال عز وجل هم أحل بيت النبوة ومعدن الرسالة هم فاطمة وعبوها وبعلها وبنوها فقال جبرائيل يا ربي أتعذن لي أن أحبت إلى الأرض ليكون معهم سادسا فقال الله نعم قد أذنت لك فهبت الأمين جبرائيل وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله رسول الله العلي الأعلى يقرئك السلام ويخصك بالتهية والإكرام ويقول لك وإزة وجلالي إني ما خلقت سماء مبنية ولا أرضا مدهية ولا قمرا منيرا ولا شمسا مضيعة ولا فلك يدور ولا بحر يجري ولا فلك يسري إلا لأجلكم ومحبتكم وقد أذنا لي أن أدخل معكم فهل تعذنوا لي يا رسول الله فقال رسول الله وعليك السلام يا أمين وحي الله إنه نعم قد أذنت لك فدخل جبرائيل معنا تحت الكساء فقال لأبي إن الله قد أوهى إليكم يقول إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا وقال علي لأبي يا رسول الله أخبرني ما لجلوسنا هذا تحت الكساء من الفضل إن الله فقال نبي والذي بعثني بالحق نبيا واستفاني برسالة نجيا ما ذكر خبرنا هذا في محفل من محافل أهل الأرض وفيه جمع من شيعتنا ومهبينا إلا ونزلت عليهم الرحمة وهفت بهم الملائكة واستغفرت لهم إلى أن يتفرقوا فقال علي إذا والله فزنا وفاز شيعتنا ورب الكعبة فقال النبي ثانيا يا علي والذي بعثني بالحق نبيا واستفاني برسالة نجيا ما ذكر خبرنا هذا في محفل من محافل أهل الأرض وفيه جمع من شيعتنا ومهبينا وفيهم محموم إلا وفرج الله حما 
ولا مغموم إلا وكشف الله غما ولا طالب حاجة إلا وقد الله حاجة فقال علي إذا فقال علي إذا والله فزنا وسعدنا وكذلك شيعتنا فازوا وسعدوا في الدنيا والآخرة ورب الكعبة Salawat. Ye kehte the shahe muzter, sakina ham nahi honge. गाब तुम पर सकीना हम नहीं होंगे लगेगी आग जल जाएंगे खेमे कनाते भी लगेगी आग जल जाएंगे खेमे भी कनाते भी बनाना खाक को बिस्तर सकीना हम नहीं होंगे ये कहते थे शहे मुझतर लहू कानों से बरसे गाता माचे रुख पे बरसेंगे लहू कानों से बरसे गाता तमाचे रुख पे बरसेंगे फिर आई जाओगी दर दर सकीना हम नहीं होंगे ये कहते थे शहे मुझतर सकीना हम नहीं हम नहीं होंगे मेरे सीने पे सोने के बजाए देखो सो जाना मेरे सीने पे सोने के बजाए देखो सो जाना पुबियो माँ के जानू पर सकीना हम नहीं होंगे ये कहते थे शहे मुझतर सकीना 
हम नहीं होंगे वो वक्त गब तुम पर दुरूर बेजी गरीब जहरा की गुरब सुनो गरीब जहरा की गुरब सुनो ले अकेला रह गया मकतल में जब मेरा मौला सिपाह शाह ने चारों तरफ से घेर लिया लबे फराद था हर एक खूर का प्यासा था गुल चरागे इमामत अभी बुझाना है अरे जमीन पे दिन से शबीर को गिराना है ये सुन के संग किसी ने जबीन पर मारा किसी ने पहलू में बरछी का फल उतार दिया अरे किसी ने सामने आकर चलाई तेग जफा गरीब सारा का जी पे संभलना मुश्किल था अलियो जहर को रन में रुलाया जाता था अरे हुसैन गिरते नहीं थे गिराया जाता था लगा जो तीर तो असगर कुश ने याद किया पुकारा गाजी को जिस वक्त सर पे गुर्ज लगा लगा जो बर्छी तो अकबर को दी तड़प के सदा तमाचाखू लीने मारा तो बोल याद हरा अली को याद किया सर पे गुर्ज चलते हुए हसन को याद किया मुँह से गलते हुए गरीब जहरा की गुरब सुनो ले
क्या क्या से तम हुसैन के दिल पर गुजर गए क्या क्या से तम हुसैन के दिल पर गुजर गए अकबर गुजर गए अलियस गए गुजर गए क्या क्या से तम हुसैन निके दिल पर गुजर गए फौजों को चीरते हुए आबा से नामदार फौजों को चीरते हुए आबा से नामदार मकत से मिसल है दर सब गुजर गए क्या क्या से तम हुसैन निके दिल पर गुजर गए अरमान ला खोद में थी माद लिए हुए अरमान ला खोद में थी माद लिए हुए दिन ब्याह के जबा वे तो अकबर गुजर गए क्या क्या से तम हुसैन निके दिल पर गुजर गए घोड़े ने दर पे आके सदा दी ये असर को घोड़े ने दर पे आके सदा दी ये असर को जहरा के लाल सब ते पयाब गुजर गए क्या क्या से तम हुसैन निके दिल पर गुजर गए देती रही तुहाई बहन बा दे कत्ल शाह देती रही दोहाई बहन बार दे कत्ल शाह लाशों को रोंदते हुए लश कर गुजर गए क्या क्या से तम हुसैन निके दिल पर गुजर गए मैं कह दी हूँ जैनब ने कहा ये रो रो कह दरबार में बे पड़ दाहू खड़ी 
बाजू में रसन है मेरे बंधी ने रंग जमाना देख कोई जाल है तखते मोहम्मद पर मैं कैदी हूँ नाना का उठा जब से साया एक पल भी न एक पल भी न चे हम ने पाया होते होते ये दिन आया शबीर का सर है नजे पर मैं कैदी दीगर नारा सलावा का मैं फाते मा आए तत के मकसद का मैं फाते मा यानी शर है अजमत नूर पाया बर फाते यानी शर है अजमत नूर पाया बर फाते माए तत के मकसद का मैं फाते मा इनसे फैला दिन हक इनसे बढ़ी नस्ल रसू इनसे फैला दिन हक इनसे बढ़ी नस्ल रसू एक कौसर है अली और एक कौसर फातिमा एक कौसर है अली और एक कौसर फातिमा तत के मकसद का मैं फाते और कश्ती दीन खुदा की ना खुदा साबित हुई कश्ती दीन खुदा की ना खुदा साबित हुई शबरो शबीर जैसे दी कलांगर फाते माँ शबरो शबीर जैसे दी कलांगर फाते माँ आए तत के मकसद का मैं बर फातेम 
नाम है तस्बी है जहरा काम तस्बी है खुदा नाम है तस्बी है जहरा काम तस्बी है खुदा जिक्र तेरा जिक्र हक अल्लाह हक बर फातमा जिक्र तेरा जिक्र हक अल्लाह हक बर फातमा तत हीर के मकसद का मैं बर फातमा आया तत हीर लिखने के लिए तकदीर ने आया ये तत हीर लिखने के लिए तकदीर ने तेरी सीरत को बनाया इसका में स्तर फातिमा आया तत ही मकसद का मैं वर फातिमा यानी शर है अजमत नूर पाया बर फातिमा आया तत हीर के बर मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद सलावा सूरा दरिया पे रो चुके आबास को हुसैन जो दरिया पे रो चुके भाई से अपने हाथ लबे नहर धो चुके यात के कत्ल अकबरो असगर भी हो चुके सीने पे जो पले थे वो मिट्टी में सो चुके थे नो हगर हरे तने पाश पाश पर कासिम की लाश पर कभी असगर की लाश पर कासिम की लाश पर कभी असगर की लाश पर लाश कर में था ये गुल के दिलावर को मार लो हाश सवार दोषे पयंबर को मार लो सैया को बेदयार को मुजत को मार लो सब मर चुके हैं अब शहे सफद को मार लो तब जे में तेरे जुल्म भी तीरे जफा भी है कहते हैं शह बताओ मेरी को खता भी है कहते हैं शह बताओ मेरी को खता भी है इस आन में हुए शहे बेकार पे 
जितने वार जितने चुभे थे तीर बदन से हुए वो पाप तड़पे जमी पगिर के मामे फलक वकार फर याद फातमा से हिलाश किर दगा तड़पा जमी पे जिसम शह मशरक का गुल था के जल्द काट लो अब सर हुसैन का गुल था के जल्द काट लो अब सर हुसैन का नागा पकड़ के ते बढ़ा शिम रे बदशया पर शकी ने रखा पा ना बका सर नंगे घर से निकली सकी ना जिगर फिगा देखी गले पबाप के जिस दाम छुरी की धार चिल्लाती थी अरे शहे वाला को छोड़ दे सर मेरा काट ले मेरे बाबा सर मेरा काट ले मेरे बाबा को छोड़ दे हजरा तो पानी पानी पुकारा कि ये इधर काटा किया गले को उधर शे मेरे बद गोहर दौड़ी निकल के खैम से जैना पर नसर चलती थी दो कदम कभी गिरती थी खाक कहती थी आह किसे मैं अब इल्तजा करूं लुटता है घर मेरा रे लोगो मैं क्या करूं लुटता है घर मेरा रे लोगो मैं क्या करूं आबास को हुसैन बर मोहम्मद वाले मोहम्मद सलवार to address the majlis let's welcome sheikh dr osama latar to the pulpit with three loud salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد 
وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين السلام عليك يا مولاي يا السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا غريب كربلاء رزقنا الله في الدنيا زيارتكم وشفاعتكم في الدنيا والآخرة أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقرآنه الحميد وقوله الحق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم A question that goes through the minds of many people is why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create us? What is the purpose for our creation? And it is important for us to identify the reasons for the creation so that it gives us a purpose living on this earth, what we need to do. As research has demonstrated, people who have a purpose, they achieve greater success than people who do not have any purpose. We need to identify the purpose of our creation. So tonight, inshallah, if Allah gives us tawfiq, we will discuss four reasons from the Quran for the creation of the human beings and one reason from a hadith of Imam al Hussein salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And we will see how these five reasons connect to Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim ajma'een. So what are the reasons? The first reason that we will discuss is mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hud, Ayah 119, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Illa man rahima rabbuk wa li thalika khalaqahum except those whom Allah or your Lord has mercy upon them, and it is for this reason He created them. Meaning that Allah created us to have mercy on us. Our existence is a mercy, rahmah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now some people will wonder, how is my existence a rahmah? I'll give you a very simple example. If you go to someone, if you go to someone and you offer them somebody who is, let's say, poor, very poor, a child, a child who is very poor, uh, living in impoverished conditions, you come to this child, you come to him, and you tell him, let's come with me. I'm going to help you get education. I'm going to help you, uh, fund you, uh, provide you with whatever means you need to succeed. So you take this child from these impoverished conditions, non-existent conditions, and you help him grow to graduate, let's say, with a very prominent degree in political science. Then this child starts working in the government, gets a very good job, and starts really elevating. Now, did you do a mercy to this child, or was it a curse? It's a mercy, correct? Most people would say you really helped this child, correct? Otherwise, this child may not have had a great future. Now, if this child 
gets a really good position in the government, starts going up, up the ranks, until one day he becomes the president of the country. Upon achieving that level, he becomes a dictator. Okay. He becomes a dictator and starts hurting people, killing people. After several years, a revolution happens. He is captured, put in prison, and he is destined to be killed. You go see that individual at that point in the prison. He'll look at you and tell you, I wish you had never helped me. I wish you had never helped me. Okay. But helping him, was it a rahmah or was it a curse? Now, all of you guys said it was a rahmah because you helped him. He chose, he chose to abuse the blessings. He chose to abuse that. He could have been a very good ruler, a very good leader, a, a just ruler. He chose to abuse it. So the creation or the help became a curse because of his own actions, not because of your doing. You did him a favor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us into existence. We were nothing. We were nothing, non-existent. That's what we were. So him bringing us to existence is a rahmah, is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We became something. We were nothing. But then how do you use your existence? Do you obey him or disobey him? He gave you aql and he gave you the path. You choose. He gave you the free will. If you choose to obey Allah, great, he will reward you. You choose to disobey, there will be a consequence to that. But otherwise, he brought you into this existence out of his mercy to you. And therefore, in this world, he provides you with all kinds of his mercy. You're showered by Allah's mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are breathing the mercy of Allah right now, the air that he's provided us with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all the means. He gave us this earth and allowed the human beings to rule on the earth. Use the earth any way they like. We now build roads in the mountains. We send spaceships to space. Maybe there will come a day, God knows, where we will start living on the moon or on Mars. Allah has given this creation under our disposal. So that's all of Allah's rahmah, Allah's rahmah. And he always showers you with his blessings with the intention of you turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just one astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu ilayhi from the bottom of the heart, Allah may forgive all your sins with it. Just one istighfar, but sincere, genuine istighfar. Like al-hur bin Yazid al-Riyahi. One astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu ilayhi he became one of the shuhada of Karbala with the Imam Al-Hussein Salam Allah It is narrated among the people of Musa, the Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, alayhi, ala nabina wa alihi wa alihi salam. There was a man who was namam, namima, means he creates problems between people. He calls you and he says, so and so said this and this about you. Then he calls that other person, he, this person said so and so, and he creates problems, fitna wal ayadu billah. And there are such people in the, in, the, in, in, in the world, unfortunately, you know. All they do is just create problems. And they come to you and they say, I really care about you. You know, the other day I was sitting in so-and-so place and so-and-so said so-and-so about you. I'm telling you because I care about you. Why, why, why tell him? Khalas, don't bother. Just leave it. Don't create problems in this world. We have enough problems as is. One of his community members was like that. Because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala withdrew rain from them. So a drought started coming. A drought started coming. People came to Musa alayhi salam. They said, Ya Musa, Ya Kalim Allah, pray to Allah to send rain upon us. It's drought. We're dying. We need rain. So Musa alayhi salam prays to Allah, Ya Rab, send us rain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds back, Ya Musa, you have been deprived of rain because a member of your community is namam. He's creating a fitna, a problem in this community. So, Ya Rab, what shall we do? This person has to leave the community. He has to get out. So that my rahmah would be bestowed upon you. Because of him, you have been deprived of the mercy. So Musa, alayhi salam, gets to a nearby mountain and starts calling, Bani Israel, or children of Israel, come. 
So they all gather in front of him. Said, this is the reason that we have been deprived of Allah's mercy. There is one of you guys who is an imam creating problems in the community. You need to leave. You know who you are. Get out. So right now, get out. Now imagine everyone is sitting down there and this person gets up. See how embarrassing that is? Now imagine on the day of judgment, we will be called out like that on the day of judgment. Now how embarrassing that is. Okay. So at that point, this person had no escape. خلاص. Now he's cornered. He knows himself. And he needs to get up and leave because they're getting deprived of drought or of rain because of him. So at that point, when there is really no hope, there is no way out. خلاص. Now he's cornered. He turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's sitting down. And he says, my Lord, I have been bad, but I ask for your forgiveness. Forgive me, and I will never go back to this again. Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayhi. Genuine. And he started to cry. Now, this is between him and Allah. Nobody is watching, nobody is seeing him. All of the sudden, Musa السلام, sees the clouds coming and rain started to pour. Musa السلام, turns to Allah, Ya Rab, no one left. What happened? Allah answered. He said, Ya Musa, my servant repented to me and I forgave him. Musa alayhi salam then asked, Ya Rab, who was it? Who was this person? Allah answered, He said, Ya Musa, I did not expose him when he was disobedient. Do you want me to expose him now that he's become obedient? We read in Dua Kumail, Ya Sattar al O one who covers. The shortcomings. Allah covers our shortcomings. And the hadith says that the shortcomings Allah covers for us are so many. That's why we read in Dua Kumail, Ya Sattar al Ayyub. Otherwise, if we were to be exposed, nobody would sit next to us anymore. None of us. This is out of Allah's Rahmah. So Allah created us to have Rahmah on us, mercy. And he gives us so many opportunities. Just one sincere istighfar. Just once. Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilay. From the bottom of your heart. You mean it. And you don't go back to that sin again. Khalas, you mean it. Sincerely, genuinely. And you'll see the doors of mercy opening for you. So that's rahmah. Allah's rahmah. Allah's rahmah. So one reason for the creation is to have rahmah, mercy upon us. That's one reason. إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّك Second reason is knowledge. Knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the last verse of Surah At-Talaq, the last verse of Surah At-Talaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is Allah who has created seven heavens and of the earth a number similar to them. The command gradually descends through them that you may know that Allah has power over all things. Yani Allah created the heavens and the earth so that you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over all things. So knowledge, to have developed ilm, لتعلموا. Allah says ilm, so you have knowledge that there is a creator, there is a maker. This knowledge can be general knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us all kinds of knowledge. يعلم. He taught the human what he did not know. What he did not know. All those thoughts and ideas, how did they develop to the human being? How could someone just get an idea sparked in his mind? Who was responsible for sparking that idea in the mind of that human? which resulted in all the civilization and the development and the technology that we have before us today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us all this. Otherwise, Allah says in the Quran, He is the one who brought you from the wombs of your mother, not knowing anything. When you were born, 
You did not know how to speak. You could not even eat. If they would leave you for a couple days on your own, you would die. You don't know anything. And then subhanallah, this child who doesn't know anything, the minute he grows up and gets a little bit of muscles, he starts using it against his parents. First thing, wal-iyadu billah. Shouting at them, wal-iyadu billah. Whereas a mu'min should really be humble to the parents. Don't use your power and your muscles against your parents. They raised you when you were helpless, powerless. Okay. So use that power to support them, to serve them. And billah, then he goes on to the other society. He flexes his muscles on the other people. Okay. Billah. Be a mercy to the world. Be a mercy so that Allah opens mercy for you. So another reason for the creation is knowledge. General knowledge, but more specifically, is so that we can recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We use this knowledge to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a physicist or a cosmologist. He studies the cosmos. His name is Kipler, Dr. Kipler. He's written a book. In that book, he says, when I started my research, the whole reason I started this research, he says, because I was an atheist. I did not believe in God. I did not believe in God. But he studied the universe, you know, galaxies and the universe, the planets, etc., etc. He says, I never thought in my wildest dreams, Sorry, Tipler, not Kipler, T with a T. T-I-P-P-L-E-R. My apologies. T-I-P-P-L-E-R. Tipler, Dr. Tipler. He says, I never thought in my wildest dreams that one day I will be writing a book confessing to the teachings of the Judeo-Christians, Jewish and Christian, that there is a creator to this universe. He says, I never thought about that because I was an atheist. But he says, I came to this conclusion through my own research. I did research myself. And this research tells me that this universe could not have come into existence on its own. There's no way. There must have been a maker for this universe. Subhanallah, this is now when ilm, knowledge comes to a person and he uses it in the right direction. He is not arrogant or stubborn. He's not stubborn. Some people are stubborn. I told you this morning about Richard Dawkins. He says, I'm at a 6.9 because I cannot conclusively say that there is no God. That's stubborn. Someone is stubborn. But when someone is not stubborn, they come to this conclusion naturally. I mean, you can't deny the evidence. It's right in front of you. So, the second reason for Allah creating us is to give us knowledge. We should use this knowledge to recognize Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam alayhi says, Awwalu al-deeni ma'rifatuh. The essence of religion is recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You recognize his existence. That's the essence of religion. Okay. So, ilm. That's the second reason. Third reason, according to the Quran. The first reason we said was rahmah, mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second reason, we said it was knowledge, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has rahmah upon us. The third reason, according to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He created us, He says in the Quran, in Surah al Dariyat, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create the jinn and the ins, but to worship me. So I've given them rahmah, mercy. I have given them ilm and knowledge. Now I also want them to worship me, ibadah, to do worship. How do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By obeying His commands. How do I obey His commands? Today we have maraja'u taqlid. They give us the book of fatawas, the laws. Telling you this is halal, this is haram, this is what you should do, and this is what you should not do. By implementing these fatawa, these teachings, this is how you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With the niyyah, with the qurba, with the niyyah of qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala. That's the ibadah. That's why these ahkam are so important. Some people say, I mean, come on, you think Allah is really going to hold us responsible because I'm, for example, listening to haram music? Allah, Allah is so merciful. Shaykh, you just said Allah created us to have mercy on us. So you think he will punish me because I'm listening to haram music? We say, 
the answer is from Imam Ali alayhi salam. He says, don't look at how small the sin is. Look at who you are disobeying. If you are experiencing a very serious financial problem, very serious, you're about, you've just lost your job, you're about to lose your house, you're about to lose your children, you're about to lose, I mean, your whole life. A person comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends someone, a person, nice man, he comes and says, listen, I know you're experiencing a lot of problems, I'm going to help you. Okay. So I will pay your mortgage. I'll give you money so that you can buy food for your children. I'll take care of all your financial needs. And he does so for maybe two years. Let's say it takes you two years, three years, five years, until you are able to get out of your difficulty and your problem. Five years, he's spending money on you, he's helping you, he's giving you, and purely for the sake of Allah. Never once does he come and tell you, I'm giving you, by the way. And I, I'm doing this for you. And he nags, no, never, never. He doesn't, he does it purely for the sake of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day after five years later on, he comes and asks you for a favor. He comes and says to you, listen, there is a very good course. If you take it at the university, there is a really good job waiting for you. You can earn $100,000 a year. Why don't you go study? And you tell him, no, forget it. You yell at him. Is that respectful? Would you feel doing you know, the right thing when you say something like this to this person? He's asking you to do something for your own good, for your own benefit, not for his own benefit. Correct? What would you call such a person who says something to that person? What would you call him? Disrespectful. Does not recognize and appreciate. Okay. Don't we do the same thing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How old are we now? 20, 30, 50? For 50 years, not five years, Allah has been showering you with His blessings. And He does not tell you, I am showering you. Billah. Allah is kareem, generous. He gives you. And He comes and says, I want you to do salat. Because it's good for you, not for me. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, needless. He does not need any, He does not need our ibadah. This ibadah that he has imposed upon us because we need it. We need the ibadah. We need the prayer. And there is numerous research. Numerous research. You can go under the scientific journals. One that comes to my mind is by a professor. His last name is Green. Green, he's published a paper on this. How religious people are happier. They have greater happiness. People who believe in a God, they live a happier life. Okay. So there's tons of research. The human being has the spiritual aspect of him, not just the materialistic aspect. That spiritual aspect needs to be fulfilled. Just like your body needs to be fulfilled. You need to have food, you need to have water to fulfill the materialistic. The spiritual side also needs fulfillment. Otherwise, there will be a vacuum. You'll feel a vacuum. And this vacuum, if it grows, God forbid, it may have some very unpleasant consequences. You have people, for example, resorting to drugs, alcohol, uh, addiction, and God forbid, in the worst case scenario, suicide. Why? Because they've lost hope. A person who commits suicide has lost hope. Okay. That's why it's haram to commit suicide. Because we never lose hope from Allah's mercy. Never. Never. If the whole world says no, and from all the materialistic aspects, it's no way, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He can say, kun fayakun. And it happens. Otherwise, can a man who's 100 years old with a wife who's 90 years old have children? No way. Medically speaking, all the doctors will say it's impossible. There is, that's, it can't happen. But Allah gave Ibrahim and Sarah Ishaq. It's possible. With Allah, it is possible. Okay. So nothing is impossible for Allah. For us, it's impossible. That's why whenever you feel into problems, you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A mu'min never loses hope. This ibadah gives you this hope, the ibadah, the worship of Allah. When a person commits a sin, billah, 
that degree of the sin then gives him that unpleasant taste of life. And therefore, the more a person sins, بالله, the more his life will become tasteless. Yes, he might become powerful, has lots of money. But when he puts his head on the pillow, I guarantee you, these people, these tyrants, they don't sleep well. I guarantee you. One of the Khulafa, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, a Khulifa of uh, Umayyah, very powerful. Towards the end of his life, one day he was standing in the balcony of his palace. And he sees a very poor man. He is washing clothes. Back in the old days, there were people who used to go gather your dirty laundry. They go to the river, they wash it for you, and take it back to you. So he saw one of those poor people washing laundry, dirty laundry on the river. Abdul Malik, this was to, towards the end of his life now. Abdul Malik was the one who instated Al Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al Thaqafi as the governor of Kufa. Hajjaj killed Qambar. He killed Kumail ibn Ziyad al Nakha'i. Kumail, Dua Kumail. He was killed by Al Hajjaj. Qambar, the servant of Imam Amir al Mu'mineen, he was killed by Al Hajjaj. And many Shia were killed by Al Hajjaj. Okay. This is a, he was a governor of Kufa and Basra and Hijaz. Who put him as the governor? Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. He put him as the governor. So he came with an iron grip. Okay. Nonetheless, towards the end of his life, he knows what he has done. He looks at this poor man and he says, I wish, I wish I did not have any of this and I was this poor man. I wish. Now, why is he wishing for this? He knows what he's done. He knows what he's committed. Okay. So that poor person, that one who was washing the land, heard him. He heard him. Apparently, he said it out loudly. So he raised his head. He said, Alhamdulillah, who made the kings wishing to be like us and did not make us wishing to be like them. I don't wish to be a king. I'm happy the way I am. Whatever Allah has given me, I'm happy. Okay. That's ibadah, obedience to Allah. So people who disobey Allah, even though they become kings, like Abdul Malik, he had maybe half of this world under his disposal. Okay. Yet, you see how unhappy he was, how stressed he was, how depressed he was. This is with every tyrant, anyone. To the degree of your disobedience, that is the degree of your feeling of uncomfort. Okay? Whereas the more you do ibadah and obedience, the more you will be at peace. That's the, Allah says that formula in the Quran. That formula is found in the Quran. Okay. So, the second reason now we said was ilm, knowledge. The third reason for the creation is ibadah. We need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth reason for Allah's creation according to the Quran is the ayah we began with from Surah Al-Mulk. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Al-ladhi khalaqa al-mawta wal-hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. The one who created death and life to test you, to examine you. Which one of you does the best of deeds, not the most of deeds, best of deeds? There's a difference. Because the niyat, the niya, who knows the niya? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may have two individuals. One person may donate only $10. Another donates a million dollars. In the eyes of people, this person who gives a 10, they say, oh, $10, who cares? You know? The million guy, oh, this guy is, mashallah, million dollars. That's in our eyes. But we don't know what the intention is. Maybe both of them are genuine and sincere. Jazahumullah khaira. Okay. But it's also possible that the person who gave the $10, this is all he had. And he gave it purely out of his love. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to Ahlul Bayt. He gave $10 with whole heart. Really, this is, he loves it. He tafdal, here, take it. Please, take this $10. Like those of you who have been to Arba'in, to Karbala in Arba'in, if you've been there, when you walk from Najaf to Karbala, you see the mawakib, all those people serving the zawar and giving to the zawar. Some of those people really don't have much. They don't have much. You find some of them taking a jug of water and they're saved the zawar with... Jug of water. This is what they have. So they offer jug, but with love. If you've been there, you'll see. They beg you. Please, please come. Some of them don't even have that. They say, come, let me massage your feet for you. I'll give you a massage. Please. And they beg you. Beg you. Please come. Come. You know. 
that want to serve you because you're Zayr al-Imam al Hussein sallallahu alayhi wa They don't know who you are. You don't know who they are. You don't even know their names. They don't want anything from you. They want to serve you. So that person who has the $10 might be giving it purely for the sake of Allah, out of his love. The person who is giving the million, maybe he's not doing it qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala. Write my name. Make sure you mention my name. You have to mention, etc., etc. All this, he's doing it for the purpose of receiving recognition. So Allah will give him that. Allah will give him the recognition. Hal jazaa'u ihsani illa ihsan So he'll get it. But will he have any ajr in the akhirah? No, not much ajr in the akhirah. Because his niyyah was not qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala. You gave for the sake of fame. I gave you fame. Khalas, I rewarded you already for your niya. So that is where the best of deeds. Ayyukum ahsanu amala. Allah will test us in this dunya with different kinds of tests. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 155, Allah mentions five kinds or examples of tests. Allah says, we will test you with بِنَقْصٍ أَوْ وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ Fear, lack of security, like you see some parts of the world today, in some parts in Pakistan, in Afghanistan, these Muharram, this last Muharram, people were doing, you know, matam, aza, and thing, and unfortunately comes somebody and causes a disruption to this aza. Some people might get killed. That's lack of peace, lack of security. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might test you with a lack of peace, a lack of security. That's one. Fear. شَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ Hunger. Hunger. People might experience hunger. وَنَقْصٍ And a loss of money, amwal, selves, meaning you might lose a loved one. You might lose a loved one. A person loses a father, a mother, a child, وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ A sibling. You lose somebody. And ثَمَرَاتِ Wealth. Wealth in general. So wealth will be taken away from you. So these are some kinds of tribulations at test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test the human being with some of them. What does Allah expect from us? وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Allah says, and give good news to those who are patient. Those who, when they're inflicted with problems in this dunya, they say, Inna lillah wa inna alayhi raji'oon. Surely to Allah we belong and to Him we shall return. Now, that is the fourth reason for the tests or the creation, to test us. Imam al Hussein sallallahu wa sallamuhu alayhi. When he was heading to Karbala, he, he, made, he gave this quote. He said, people are the slaves of dunya. And nasu abidu dunya. And religion is just words that they utter on their tongue. They use it for as long as they can benefit from it. If you, I can benefit from religion, why not? I'll use it. However, once they are tested, فَإِذَا مُحِّصُوا بالبلاء, then few individuals will remain steadfast. When he left Mecca, Salamullah alayhi, and headed towards Kufa initially, before he was intercepted, he had 1,000 people with him. On the day of Ashura, how many? Huh? Less than 100. According to Al Luhuf, Sheikh Sayyid ibn Tawus, he says 33 people converted. Switch sides from Umar ibn Sa'ad's camp to Imam al Hussein's camp. 33 people in total, according to one of the ulama, one of the historians. So let's say about 120, give or take approximately. You know, 33 plus 72 plus the 18 of the family members, give or take approximately 120 people. From 1,000, where did the remaining 900 people go? 10% remained, almost approximately. 90% disappeared. Where are we, brothers and sisters? Where do we stand? Are we amongst the 10% or the 90%? Now we all say, no, of course, I'll be there with Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. We always say that. But in dunya, let's really check ourselves. If I cannot let go of sins, if I cannot let go of some things that I like in dunya, how many of us pray Salatul Layl, wake up for the night prayer? Habib ibn Mabahir used to read the Quran every night, the whole Quran for 40 years. 
not one night, 40 years. Okay. Burair ibn Khudair was a teacher of Quran in Kufa. Okay. These people were mu'mineen, muttaqeen, ibadullah al-saliheen. So, and even those who changed, switched sides, they had some blessing, some barakah in their lives. Otherwise, they would not have had that tawfiq. So, we really need to make sure that we are always in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we make a mistake, we do istighfar. That's why it's mustahab to do istighfar regularly. Astaghfirullah rabbi atubuli, astaghfirullah rabbi atubuli. It can increase your rizq, it can increase your tawfiqat. Say, astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu ilayh. That's the fourth reason for the creation, to test us. Because that's when the distinction comes in. Who is really a true mu'min versus those who claim to be mu'mini? Because it's easy, words are easy. Everyone says, I'm a mu'min. But during the time of test, you can tell. Sometimes, for example, mu'mineen, they're all mu'mineen. But at the time of marriage, for example, God forbid if there's a dispute in the marriage, you find the father, for example, taking sides. Because he's my son, Oh, he takes the side of his son, even though his son might be wrong. Oh, because she's my daughter, I will take the side of my daughter, even though she's wrong. But my daughter, khalas, she's right. Well, that's where the taqwa comes in. That's where the test comes in. So Allah gives us different kinds of tests to see when will you stand with the haq because it's haq, even if it's against your own child. Okay. Can you do that? That's why the test comes in. That's the fourth reason. The fifth reason is a hadith from Imam al Hussein, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. He came one day and he said, Oh people, surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this creation so that they can recognize him. And if they recognize him, they will worship him. And if they worship him, they will worship none other than him. So a man asked, he said, Ya ibn Rasulullah, how do we recognize Allah so that we can worship him and we worship none other than him? How? He said, by recognizing the Imam of the time. Recognizing and following the Imam of the time. So when you follow the Imam of the time, then that Imam will help you recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's something we read in a dua found in Mafatihul Jinan called Dua Zamanul Ghaib. O Allah. Make me recognize you, for if I don't recognize you, I will not recognize your messenger. O oh Allah, make me recognize your messenger, for if I don't recognize your messenger, I will not recognize your hujjah, the proof. And O oh Allah, make me recognize the proof, your proof, for if I don't recognize your proof, I'll be misguided from my religion. And hence, you see in the Shi'i school, alhamdulillah, today you take a look at the Shi'i school. 95%, maybe 98% of our ahkam are similar. Despite of who, which marja you follow. All of them say, for example, you have to pray with your hands down. In the Sunni school, no, they have a dispute. Three of the fuqaha, they say you have to cross your arms. Imam Malik says, no, pray with your hands down. So they don't agree on this. Something that is done daily on a regular basis, but they don't follow it. Ahsan, jazakallah khair, ahsan, thank you so much. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And if you look at the rest of their ahkam, if you read the rest of their ahkam, there is a book called the Fiqh based on the four schools of jurisprudence. Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi'i and Hanbali. And you look at, read that book and you see all the differences. In the Shi'i school, we all have, alhamdulillah, more or less the same. Why? Because of our Imams alayhim wassalam and the teachings of Ahlul Bayt and Maraja'u Taqlid. May Allah bless them all, inshaAllah. So, the recognition of all this. Now, we understand five reasons for the creation of this humanity, human being. Do we remember them? Let's try. The first one was what? Mercy, Rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one was knowledge, so that we can recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third reason was worship, ibadah. Fourth reason was test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All these four reasons are found in the Quran. The fifth reason is from Al Imam Salamullah alayhi, and he says is what? So that we can recognize the Imam of our time. Okay? Because that would lead us to the worship and recognition of Allah. Now, pay attention with me, please, for a second. The first reason is Rahmah. Correct? Rahmah. What is the second ayah? in the Quran, when you open the Quran, 
the copy of the Quran that we have with us today, if you open it, if you open this copy of the Quran, the first page, if you open the first page, what is that first ayah in the Quran? Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim What's the second ayah? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. This is the second ayah in the Quran. What does Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen mean? Praise be to the world, to the Lord of the worlds. Worlds, not just world, worlds. There are so many worlds. Worlds of dunya, worlds of barzakh, world of akhira, world before dunya, and so many worlds. He is the Lord of all these worlds, correct? Rabbil Alameen. Okay, now pay attention with me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about our Prophet in Surah Al-Anbiya, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We did not send you but as a rahmah to the worlds. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alih and Ahlul Bayt alayhim as-salam are the source or the means of bestowing this rahmah on the creation. It is through them. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to the Lord of the world. Allah is the Lord of everything, correct? Wherever the magnitude of Allah's Lordship extends, the magnitude of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam's rahmah also extends. Can you imagine this? See how great is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and the same for Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salam. Because we have a hadith. If it weren't for the presence of the hujjah, the imam of the time, earth would not be stable anymore. It would lose its presence. The Imam Sallallahu Alaihi is a means of providing the Rahmah to this world and to the creation of Allah. Okay, so one of the reasons of the creation is mercy, but that mercy comes through the means of Ahlul Bayt Sallallahu wa Sallam That's one. Second, knowledge. Correct. What do we read in Surah Al Jumu'ah? بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ It is he the one who sent among the people of Mecca a messenger of them so that he can teach them wisdom to purify them, teach them wisdom and teach them يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ تعليم كتابا حكمة قرآنا So who is the teacher? Who is the one who gives us the knowledge, the ilm? It is through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salam. Through Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And you see many examples after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi whenever people had problems, any time, from that first Khalifa all the way up to the 12th Imam. Ajallah ta'ala farajah al-Sharif. So many of these leaders who came, rulers, how many times they had problems and who would they ask? Our Imams alayhim salam They would turn to our Imams, help us, solve our problems for us. So many times, correct? This Abdul Malik ibn Marwan I told you about. In his time there was a financial currency crisis because the Muslims at the time they used to import their coins from the Romans, from the Caesar, the Caesar. There was a dispute between him and the Caesar. So the Caesar said, I am going to print an anti-Islamic slogan on the coins that I will be sending you. So anti-Islamic. I'm going to teach you guys a lesson. So you guys will use coins with anti-Islamic slogans. So he felt embarrassed, although he didn't really care. But of course, you know, he has to show some face that he's at the, after all, he's the leader of the Muslims, or at least the so-called leader of the Muslims. So... He needed to resolve the problem. He was unable to. He, he was really stuck. He said, we have to resolve the problem. Finally, one of his advisors said, you know, there is a man who can solve your problem for you. He said, who? He said, Ali ibn al-Husayn. Who else? Reach him. Reach out to him. So he says, you're right. How did I forget about him? So he writes a letter to Imam al-Sajjad, salamullah alayhi. He says, help us. We have a, a crisis. We have a, a, a situation here. Imam, salamullah alayhi, sends his son, Imam al-Baqir, alayhi salam, to him. He says, go and teach them what to do. So Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam comes. He says, gather all the goldsmiths to me. So they bring all the goldsmiths. And he teaches them how to mint 
Islamic coins themselves. So they started minting their own coins. He said to them, a gold coin would have this much weight, a silver coin would have this much weight, etc. He taught them all this and he went back. So our Imams resolved crises for these rulers and for these leaders because of their ilm, because of their knowledge. So one of the reasons for Allah's creation to us is knowledge and that knowledge comes to us through Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. The third reason for our creation was what? Ibadah, worship. I guess it's needless to say. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islama deena. When did that happen? When was the religion completed? When was it perfected? With the wilaya, with the imama. Now that where is an imam, you follow an imam, the religion is now complete and perfect because whatever questions you have, you resort to this imam. And this imam will teach you how to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way Allah wants to be obeyed, not the way you like to be obeyed. And ibadah is not just about salat and siyam. Ibad for, ibadah for us is a way of life. If you are a business person, how do you do business in a way that you don't do sin? Ma'asiyah. In your marriage life, how do you treat your spouse so that you don't commit sin? How do you treat your children? How do you treat your parents? So in the social life, in the political life, in the financial life, and so on aspect, in every aspect of life, religion applies. And therefore, the religion was completed and perfected with the imam. Otherwise, this condition of the creation would not have been fulfilled. And well, Iyadu Billah means it would have been a vanity. Allah created us to have him worship him. And he did not give us a complete and comprehensive guideline as to how do we worship him. This was given to us through Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allah salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa ajal farajah. That's your third reason for the creation. The fourth reason was testing, if you remember. Allah tests us through various tests, but one of the also biggest tests that Allah tested humanity and this ummah with was Ahlul Bayt alayhim On the day of Ashura, Zuhayr ibn al Qayn asked Imam al Hussein alayhi salam for permission to speak to the enemies before the battle. He gave him permission. He came to them and he said, People, Allah has tested us. In Allah abtalana wa abtalakum. Allah has tested us and you. With the progeny of his messenger. To see how are we going to treat them and deal with them. So don't obey the sinners and obey them. Ahlul Bayti alayhim salam But they shot him with arrows. And so he retreated. One of the biggest tests is the obedience to the Imams alayhim salam Today you have the Muslims, the majority of them. Do they recognize the Imam? The majority of Muslims today, they don't, unfortunately. Some of them, wal'iyadu billah, may even, not even like the Imam, wal'iyadu billah. Those are the Nasibis, wal'iyadu billah. They come and if they had the power, like we saw in 2006, they destroyed the shrine in Al-Askariyayn. The shrine was destroyed. Why, 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 why would they destroy the shrine? And we saw what happened, what we did not see, but a century ago, in 1928, when they destroyed the shrines in Baqiyah. You saw that. Those people who destroy the shrines, you think they love Ahlul Bayt alayhim as yeah. But they say, Allahu Akbar. Okay. Allahu Akbar. Okay. Okay. Do they understand what does Allahu Akbar mean? No, unfortunately they don't. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested us with Ahlul Bayt alayhim as to see if we will follow them and obey them. Now that you have this understanding, this gives you an understanding as to the hadith when we read Hadith al Kisa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to his angels, I did not create this world, this universe, but for the love of those five who are under the kisa. Jibra'il asks, who is under the kisa, Ya Rab? And Allah responds, Fatima wa abuha wa ba'luha wa banuha. Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa That gives us one meaning of this hadith now. We understand 
because if it weren't for those people under the cloak, the purpose of the creation of this universe would not have been fulfilled. The purpose of the creation of this world would not have been achieved. Ilm and mercy and knowledge and uh, testing with all and the worship and recognizing of the Imam. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wal billah would have created a creation without a purpose, vanity, and hasha lillah to do that. You see how great are Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salam? And we really need to recognize their significance and magnificence, salamullahi alayhim ajma'een. Great. With this, if we recognize this is how Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salam are, they are the means of us achieving the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mercy of Allah, the blessings and the barakat of Allah comes to us through Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salam. Just like as an example, as an example, the rain comes to us through the cloud. The cloud, these are the means of getting us rain, which is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are, again, the means, they're like that cloud which showers us with rahmah, with mercy, with knowledge, with the recognition of Allah, and so on and so forth. So they are the means. How did this ummah then treat Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented Ahlul Bayt to this ummah to test them. Gave this Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam to this ummah so that they achieve all these blessings. But what did the ummah do to Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam? You'll take a look at from Fatima salamullahi alayha to the 11th Imam and the 12th salamullahi alayha. Did any one of them die naturally? Days after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi left this dunya, those same people who saw him, who heard him, they turn against him and come to attack his own daughter, killing her, salamullahi alayhi His son-in-law, his brother, his cousin, Ali ibn Abi Talib, salamullahi alayhi is pushed aside for 25 years. And then when he comes to the Khilafah, they fight against him until they kill him. Salamullahi alayhi. Until he also gets killed. His grandchildren, who he used to hug them and kiss them and tell people, I love them. I love them. These are my children. I love them. May Allah love those who love them. One of them was poisoned and deprived of the opportunity of being buried next to his grandfather. And the other one, Salamullahi alayka ya Abu Abdullah, was cut into pieces on the plains of Karbala. Imam al-Sajjad, Salamullahi alayh, one of his companions, Abu Hamza Thumali, comes to see him. He finds him crying in pain, weeping. He says, Ya ibn Rasulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored you, Ahl al-Bayt, alayhim as with shahada. He's trying to comfort the Imam, salamullahi alayhi. Allah has given you the honor of shahada. Look at your father, Amir, uh, Imam al-Hussein, uncle Imam al-Hassan, your grandfather, Amir al mumin They all got killed. And same thing for your father as well. So why are you crying so hard? He said, may Allah bless you, Ya Aba Hamza. I know you're trying to comfort me. But Ya Aba Hamza, Ya'qub the Prophet lost only one of his sons. And he knew he will be back and see him. He knew he was alive. Yet he cried so much for him until he lost his eyesight. Ya Aba Hamza, I saw 18 moons. 18 of my family members get slaughtered in front of my eyes. I saw my father's head on the spears of Bani Umayyah, touring the cities from one place to another place. Ya Aba Hamza, since when had our women and children been taken as prisoners for Bani Umayyah? 
I saw my aunt Zainab Salamullah alayha crying. Aywa Muhammada, Aywa Aliya. And the enemies would come and they would hit her with their whips. I saw the children of Abi Abdullah Al Hussein crying, Oh Father Abba Abdullah. And there is no one to help them, no one to look after them. One of the little girls of Imam Al Hussein, alayhi salam. She was seen on the 11th day of Muharram on the body of her father, Abi Abdullah, hugging it, calling him Abaya Hussein, Abaya Hussein. Oh, Father Abba Abdullah, this is your daughter, answer me. Then Zainab alayhi salam came to her and told her, My little girl, come, we have to go. She said, My Amma, I don't want to leave my father. I don't want to leave the body of my father. So then Shimmer comes to her, he beats the little girl. Yatimatul Hussein alayhi salam, she's an orphan. If you find a little girl crying, you would really come to comfort her, to take care of her. This is the daughter of Abi Abdullah, she's missing her father. These enemies of Allah, they come to her, they hit her on the body of her father and then they drag her away from the body. She looks at the body of Abi Abdullah. She says, oh father, look what they're doing to me. Ah, Abaya Hussein. Then they go on a journey from Karbala to Kufa. And on a day like today, the 19th of Muharram, the caravan starts moving from Kufa, heading towards Sham, with the chains in the arms and the neck and the feet of Imam al-Sajjad, salamullahi alayhi. On the camel going from one city to another city, from one station to another station. And these children, anytime they cry, Oh Father Abu Abdullah, the enemies would come and hit them, beat them with no mercy, with no rahmah. Until they arrive at the gate of Sham, they find the people celebrating. So one of the companions of Rasulullah, a man by the name of Sahel, he says, I came to Sham. I saw everyone celebrating. I went and asked, is there a Eid in Sham that we don't know about? So I was told that there were a group of rebels who rebelled against the Khalifa and they were killed. So we're celebrating the victory. And then he said, I was walking on the streets of Sham. I saw in one small alley, a group of old men, they were crying. So I approached them. I said, I see the whole city rejoicing and celebrating. Why are you crying? They thought I was a spy, so they got scared. They said, nothing, nothing. We're not doing anything. He said, don't worry. I am Sahil ibn Sa'd al-Sa'idi. I'm a man who met Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And I heard his hadith. They said, Ya Sahel, if that is the case, then have you not heard the news? They said, what news? They said, Sahel, it is a strange thing that skies haven't yet fallen on the earth. What is the matter? Tell me. Hussein has been killed in Karbala, Ya Sahel. The son of Rasulullah's head is coming with the family today arriving and these people are celebrating. I said, from which gate will they be entering? They told me from a gate called Babu Sa'at. So I rushed to that gate. From a distance, I saw the caravan of Abi Abdullah al Hussein arriving to Sham. From a distance, I look and I see Imam al Sajjad wearing a red shirt. I was surprised. Ahlul Bayti alayhim as salam usually don't wear red. So I was wondering, why is he wearing a red shirt? I approached the Imam and I saw, as I noticed, I came closer. I saw that the shirt is not red, but it had turned red from the blood that is gushing from the neck of the Imam. Salamullahi alayhim. I came to him, I said, Assalamu alayka ya ibn Rasulillah. He said, looked at me and said, Who are you? Everyone is cursing us, throwing stones at us, but you seem to recognize us. He said, My master, I am Sahl ibn Sa'd al Sa'idi. I met your grandfather, Rasulullah. 
How can I serve you? I'm at your service. He said, Ya Sahel, do you have some cloth, some extra cloth on you? He said, yes, I gave it to him. He put it underneath his neck, between the chain and his neck, because the neck was really chewing on the flesh of the Imam. He then said, Ya Sahel, do you have money on you? He said, yes. He says, go and pay these people to lift the heads in front of the caravan. So people become busy looking at the heads of the shuhada instead of looking at the daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He said, I did that. Ah, inna lillah. Raise your hands in the dua, Ya Mu'mineen, Ya Mu'minat. This is the time, inshallah, when du'as are accepted, hajat are fulfilled. We have many Mu'mineen who requested us to remember them in our du'as. Some are having some difficulties, some are very ill, some are experiencing this cancer. May Allah, inshallah, grant them all quick and complete recovery, inshallah, and keep all harm away from the mu'mineen. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء everyone أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا فالسوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف اللهم إنا نسألك وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم ten times together يا الله 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 إلهي بفاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسرع المستودع فيها اكشف عنا السوء يا الله اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا كفر عنا سياتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار مع محمد وآله الأطهار Oh Allah make us and our children until the day of judgment among the sincere Shia of Imam Al-Hussein عليه السلام يا الله and the sincere khuddam and servants of Imam Al-Hussein ya Allah grant us ziyara of Imam Al-Hussein in Karbala soon ya Allah and his shafa'a in dunya in the qabr and in the akhirah ya Allah Oh Allah, through the barakah of Sayyid al-Shuhada, fulfill the hajat of all mu'mineen and mu'minat. All those who are ill, grant them a quick and complete recovery, Ya Allah. Keep all harm away from the Shia of Abi Abdullah al-Husayn, Ya Allah. Allahumma rabbana aghfir li wa li walidayya wa li al-mu'mineen yawma yaqoom al-hisab. رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا اجزهما بالإحسان إحسانا وبالسيئات غفرانا رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج واجعلنا من شيعته وأنصاره وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين لقضاء الحوائج شفاء المرضى كشف هذه الغم عن هذه الأمة ولتعجيل فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان and for the arwah of all marhumin, mu'mineen and mu'minat, especially the marhumin 
of the Rizbi family and their spouses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower them with his maghfirat insha'Allah and keep them with Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And for all the arwah of the shuhada and the ulama, rahimallah, may yaqra as surat al-mubarakat al-fatihati ma'a salawat. Allah salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين يا فنا وديا فنستعين بن الصراط المستقيم الصراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المهدين Brothers and sisters, just a humble reminder uh, There are lots of poor people in Karbala And those of you who may not get the tawfiq to go for ziyarat al-arba'in in Karbala Then we're raising funds, $30 per ziyara You can give $30, you'll have one ziyara performed on your behalf or the behalf of whomever you wish to make the niyyah for on the day of Arba'een at the Haram of Imam al Hussein and Abu al Fadl al Abbas alayhim as salam. So, this way, inshallah, you'll get the tawfiq for the ziyara and you can make the niyyah yourself and arrange to transfer the funds to myself, inshallah. We'll be collecting until Safar 10th, the 10th of Safar, and then we'll be sending, inshallah, the funds over there so that on the day of Arba'een they do ziyara. You can choose your niyyah, make your niyyah. Each ziyara is $30. You pay $60, you get two ziyaras performed, and so on and so forth, inshallah. May Allah accept from you all. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allah sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum. Ma tama Hussein? Ya Hussein? Ya Hussein? Ya Hussein? Ya Hussein? Ya Hussein? Ya Hussein? يا حسين 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 فاطمة كتنة علی کے نور این نے با خدا حسین نے دین کو بچا لیا فاطمہ کے چین نے علی کے نور فاطمہ کے چین نے علی کے نور این نے با خدا حسین نے دین کو بچا لیا فاطمہ کے چین نے رہا تھا دین مصطفیٰ کے نام پر حرف آ رہا تھا ممبر رسول بک رہا تھا تخت شام پر دین کی اساس نے دست حق شناس نے امت محمدی کو خواب سے جگا دیا دین کو بچا لیا فاطمہ کے چین نے با خدا حسین نے طرف سے بند ہو چکے تھے حق راستے ہر طرف سے بند ہو چکے تھے حق راستے خون مانگتا تھا دین زندگی کے واسطے دین کے اصول نے نائب رسول نے زندگی کا قرض اپنے خون سے چکا دیا دین کو بچا لیا فاطمہ کے چین نے دین کو بچا لیا
बचा लिया अमीर शाम बन गया था सांप आसतीन का अमीर शाम बन गया था सांप आसतीन का रवि के सर पे रख रहा था ताजदीन का के सर पे रख रहा था ताजदीन बादशाह दीन ने बोरिया नशीन ने आरजू है कुछ रवि को खाक में मिला दिया दीन को बचा लिया बाते माँ के चैन ने हाँ खुदा हुसैन ने फिर से शिरक की तरफ पलट न जाए आदमी फिर से शिरक की तरफ राह मुस्तकीम से भटक न जाए आदमी राह मुस्तकीम से शाह तश न काम ने वक्त के इमाम ने हक की राह पर लहू से दिया जला दिया दीन को बचा लिया बाते माँ के चैन ने दीन को बचा लिया बढ़ते बढ़ते बात जब उसूल दी पे आ गई बढ़ते बढ़ते और यजीदियत की शक्ल में उरूज पा गई और यजीदियत की बढ़ के फिर दिलेर ने शेर हक के शेर ने दोपहर में तक तो ताज खसरे शाम ढा दिया दीन को बचा लिया बाते माँ के चैन ने अली के नूर ने खुदा हुसैन ने दीन को बचा लिया या हुसैन बात ही 
اور ہے
किसने जख्म सिना दिल पे खाया नहीं किसने जख्म सिना दिल पे खाया नहीं किसने सीने को चल नी बनाया नहीं किसने सीने को चल नी बनाया नहीं किसके लाशे को शे ने उठाया नहीं लाशे को शे ने उठाया नहीं हाथ ले किन बह रन में हर एक साथ शीरी जबान रन में हर एक साथ शीरी जबान जिसके लह जे पैदा बुद्ध भी दे दे जा बुद्ध भी इन में जिस को भी कहे ते शहे इन सो को भी कहे ते शहे इन सो सुबह शूर वो पढ़ के दे खुर का सर है खुर का सर है जानु वेश सर है जानु शबीर है और का सर है जानु शबीर है और का सर है जानु शबीर मरने वाले मरने वाले क्या तेरी तक दीर है और का सर है जानु शबीर है और का सर है जानु शबीर है खौफ क्या मह शर का दामन गिर है खौफ क्या मह शर के दामन 
گیر ہے خوف کیا محشر کا دامن گیر ہے ہاتھ میں ہاتھ میں جب دامن شبیر ہے پور کا سر ہے زانو شبیر ہے پور کا سر ہے زانو شبیر ہے نام ہے میرا زادہ رے حسین 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 کام میرا کام میرا ماتم شبیر ہے سر ہے زانو شبیر آپ نے جو خواب دیکھا تھا خلید آپ نے جو خواب دیکھا تھا خلید آپ نے جو خواب دیکھا تھا خلید کربلا کربلا اس خواب کی تبیر ہے پور کا سر ہے زانو شبیر ہے پور کا سر ہے زانو شبیر ہے دیکھ امت دیکھ لے اکبر کی لاش امت دیکھ لے اکبر کی لاش دیکھ امت دیکھ لے اکبر کی لاش دیکھ امت دیکھ لے اکبر کی لاش دیکھے امت دیکھ لے اکبر کی لاش یہ نبی یہ نبی کی خوبری تصویر ہے پور کا سر ہے سانو شبیر ہے پور کا سر ہے سانو کٹ رہا ہے تیگ سے شے کا گلا کٹ رہا ہے تیگ سے شے کا گلا کٹ رہا ہے تیگ سے شے کا گلا کٹ رہا ہے تیگ سے شے کٹ رہا ہے تیگ سے شے کا گلا اور بالی اور بالی پر کھڑی ہم شیر ہے زانو ہے شبیر ہے پر کا سر ہے لاش اکبر دیکھ کر ماں نے کہا لاش اکبر دیکھ کر ماں نے کہا لاش اکبر دیکھ کر ماں 
ने कहा अकबर देख कर माँ ने कहा लाश अकबर देख कर माँ ने कहा ख्वाब क्या ख्वाब क्या देखे ते क्या वीर है सर है जानू है शबीर है अब तक है जबानों पे अलमदार अलमदार صلی اللہ محمد و آل محمد یا اللہ ماتم داروں کے بازوں میں قوت حیدری عطا فرما مومنین کو کوئی غم نہ دے سوائے غم حسین کے ہمارے علماء دین کا سایہ ہمیشہ ہمارے سروں پر قائم رکھ ہماری عزاداری امام علیہ السلام کے بارگاہ میں قبول اور مقبول ہو اور اس مجلس عزا کا ثواب سچے بھائی کی روح کو پہنچے اور اس کے علاوہ میں یہ نام لے رہا ہوں آپ تمام حضرات ایک سورہ فاتحہ پڑھ کے ان تمام مرہومین کی روح کو شاہد کریں سید علی محمد رزوی سید جمال اختر زیدی سید نجم الحسن رزوی سید نیر رضا رزوی اینڈ آل دی مومنین اور مومنات جو مرہومین ہیں ان سب کی ارواح کو ایک سورہ فاتحہ پڑھ کر بخش دیں بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین الرحمن الرحیم 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 متوجہ زہرت صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم یا رسول اللہ السلام علیکہ یا نبی اللہ السلام علیکہ یا سعود المرسلین السلام علیکہ یا خاتم نبین السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ السلام علیکہ یا ام المومنین ختیجت القبرا صلوات اللہ علیہ السلام علیکہ یا امیر المومنین ویا سعود الوسین امام علی ابن ابی طالب السلام علیکہ یا قررتین رسول فاطمة الزہرہ سیدت النساء العالمین السلام علیکہ یا امام اللہ حسن والحسین سیدہ شباب اہل الجنہ السلام علیکہ ام المسائب حورا زینب بنت امیر المومنین السلام علیکہ افضل الشہداء باب الحوائج ابن الفضل الباس ابن امیر المومنین 
السلام علیکم جمعی و شہدہ کربلا و سیران کربلا و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ السلام علیکی اغریب الغربا السلام علیکی امین الزوفاء والفقراء السلام علیکی یا شمس شموس السلام علیکی یا نیس النفوس السلام علیکی یا ایہا المتفون بیرزتوس السلام علیکی یا مغیس شیعت زوارفی و ملجدا السلام علیکی یا سلطان العرب والعجم السلام علیکی یا بالحسن یا امام علی ابن موسی الرضا الراد بالقدر والقضا روحی ورواہ المومنین علیک الفدا السلام علی آبائک السبا و ابنائک الاربا جمعی و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم 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 السلام علیکی امام الانس والجان السلام علیکی یا شریک القرآن السلام علیکی یا خلیفت الرحمن السلام علیکی یا قاتل البرحان السلام علیکی یا امام زمان نحاظ اجل اللہ تعالی فرجک و سحل اللہ تعالی مخرجک و ظہورک و جعلنا من انسارک و آمانک السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ